the binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution. meaning that there are a countable number of possible outcomes. So it might still be that there's an infinite number of outcomes, but we could eventually count to that. And specifically in this case, we're talking about um, whole number outcomes. So whenever we use the binomial distribution, we need to be sure some specific conditions are met. Otherwise, we're using the wrong approach and coming up with incorrect results. So for the binomial distribution to apply, we need to have a fixed number of trials. So when we begin our experiment, we need to decide on n number of trials. So 15 trials, 10 trials, however many. Each experiment or each trial needs to have only two outcomes. and we refer to those as success or failure. So there are two outcomes, one that we're interested in and one that we're not interested in occurring. The probability of success which is usually represented with a P must be the same in each trial. Now keep in mind this doesn't mean that the outcomes are equally likely. So we have two outcomes. It doesn't mean the probability of each one occurring is 50-50. It just means that in each occurrence of the trial, in each trial or in each individual experiment, each of those outcomes have the same probability of success. So we're not changing that from trial to trial. We can also calculate the probability of failure as 1 minus p. So this again comes back to that complement rule for probabilities. If the probability of success is 30%, then the probability of failure is 1 minus 30% or 70%. And our trials must be independent, meaning the outcome of one trial shouldn't affect the outcome of any future trials. So in our first example, let's look at a few cases where these conditions don't hold. So in each case we want to explain why these experiments don't meet the requirements for being binomial experiments. In part A we want to record the number of different eye colors in a group of 50 randomly selected people. So the issue here is that there are more than two possible outcomes. People could have brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, as soon as we have more than two outcomes, the conditions aren't met for the binomial distribution. In part B, a married couple decides to have children until a girl is born, but to stop at five children if they don't have any girls. So the condition that's broken here is there's not a fixed number of trials. So in this case, they might stop after one child if the first child is a girl. They might have up to five kids if they don't have any girls up until then, or they might have any number in between. So they're not starting out saying that we're going to have exactly three kids or we're going to have exactly five kids. In part B, suppose the probability that a flight will arrive on time is 85%. How many flights arrive on time out of 300 flights scheduled to land on a day in January? So the problem here is that these events are not independent. So in certain cases, one flight can affect another. If one flight is delayed and has to be put into a holding pattern around the airport, if that's affecting other flights, then not just that flight is going to be delayed, but other flights will be affected because of that. So in that case, we don't have independent events. And in uh, part D, a student guesses on every question of a test that has 10 multiple choice questions and 10 true false questions. We want to record the number of questions the student gets right. So in this case, our problem is that the probability of success
is not the same on each trial. So assuming our multiple choice test questions have either four or five responses, the probability of success is one out of four, one out of five, but for a true false question, it's 50-50. There's only two possible options. So the probability of success in each trial isn't the same. So if one of any one of those conditions fails, then we can't apply the techniques for the binomial distribution. But if we can verify all of those are met, then we can use the techniques from this section. When we are using probabilities of the binomial distribution, we're also going to have to pay close attention to our probability statements. For instance, there's going to be a difference between calculating the probability that x is less than a or the probability that x is less than or equal to a. And the same thing would hold true for strictly greater than or greater than or equal to. Those two probability statements and the methods we'll use to calculate those results will lead to two different numbers. So we need to make sure we're paying attention to the wording of the question and getting that statement correct. 